There YouTube, Mr. Lubufu here with eight new spoilers from Gate Crash. Some one of some of them are uh, pretty big names, and uh, I'm gonna get a lot of haters on this video. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I give my opinions of cars as I see them, and sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. Um, and uh, well, I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong this time. But we're gonna go ahead and go through the cards. The one I'm not having doubts about is Scar Goliath. So it's an 8 mana 9 9 trample that has Blood Rush for 7 that if you Blood Rush it it's giant pump spell and it's uh it's a lot it's it's you know solid it's okay. It's not gonna see any limited play at all. Uh because uh 8 mana 9 9 is just a little bit too slow for the current constructed form. I'm gonna be talking a lot more about constructed and limited. Like those are the two formats I'm gonna be talking about the most. Um I'm most comfortable with those, but uh, this guy seems just a little bit too slow. He's the pre-release or he's the release card, and um, barring Restoration Angel, since they made uh, the or the re the release cards are typically you know not that impressive, but you never know. Uh, I don't think this guy's gonna be it though. Next we have Consuming Aberration. So it's a f um, this is I believe the pre-release if you're in Demir. See, it's five mana, three colors, blue, black. So its power and toughness are equal to the card, or to the number of cards in an opponent's graveyards. So multiplayer EDH. Um, but whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards until his or her library. So they reveal a land, then put those cards into his or her graveyard. Um, I mean, it seems solid. Um, I, I I think for for limited for any sort of mill strategy, it's way too slow. Um, because you can get, you don't, you div, you typically don't want to play creatures, I, I know a lot about Modern Mill, but you typically don't want to be playing 5 mana creatures that, um, one land doesn't mill too much, so it would mill between somewhere 1 and, like, 6, statistically, no more than that. So, I mean, I think for limited, it's quite powerful, and, uh, can do some serious work outside of that, no thank you. Uh, next, you have Night Veil vale Spectre, which I believe is the Buy a Box promo. So it's uh, three hybrid blue black uh, mana for two three flyer. That whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of his or her library, and you may play cards exiled with Night Veil vale Spectre. Problem is, you have to pay the mana cost. Um, it doesn't say without paying this mana cost, so that's something to keep in mind. I still think it's pretty cool though. Um, it's two three flyer for three. I I'm. I'm a little bit skeptical about it. It seems really cool, though. I'm not gonna lie. I, I th this one I'm kind of torn about. I'm really not sure. This one, however, I'm not. Zama Guild Mage. This is the the full art card you get for playing um, in game day. It's green blue two two, and it's well a guild mage. And we have uh, for green blue each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Really, yeah. Uh, Pardon, really seems good with uh, with Evolve. Um, double the plus one plus one counters is solid. And then the other ability is, well, blue green removal plus one plus one counter and draw a card, which is uh, also pretty solid. I think this guy is very powerful. Did I expect any of the guild mages not to be? Eh, not really. All the guild mages in Return to Ravnica are quite strong, and this guy inclusive. They just get better if you draft the nuttier version of the deck. Only thing is, I wish it was a merfolk, but. Nitpicking here. Uh, next you have Gruul Key Rune, so it's three mana. It's Key Rune, so it adds red or green, and then it becomes a three-two um, beast artifact creature with trample, red and green. Um, I don't think this guy's gonna be as good because of again. I'm trying to speculate here, so I might be horribly wrong. In Return to Round the Cut, there were a lot of two twos and two ones, a lot of them. That's what made cards like um, Call of the Conclave, which is I mean, okay. Yes, you're getting a 3-3 for 2 mana, which is already really solid. But 3-3 three, three, uh, center tokens were typically pretty hard to deal with um, a lot of the time. There were a lot of 2, two, two power, 2 toughness guys. Um, and so I think this Gruul Key is not going to be as good if this pattern continues. If there's a lot of 1-1s, one like there was in Scars of Mirrodin block, then, you know, all bets are off and this guy seems quite solid. But it's a key rune. Um, next we have, I think this card's... Fantastic. Or not, and by fantastic, I mean um, it's a lot of fun. Hands of Binding. So it's blue colorless. That tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap. 
and it has Cypher. Um, it's important to keep in mind that if you have Hands of Binding, they leave up one blocker. You play Hands of Binding, tap their other or tap their blocker, then you cipher it onto a creature and you attack their creature, and you can tap another creature they don't have, and that would also not untap. So you can get double the value off of it, which is pretty sick. I think this this is definitely a, a, a higher pick common. Um, We'll see if I'm wrong about this one, but this is this one I'm gonna go a little bit gutsy on. Um, Clan Defiance, I think, is sick. It's great. Or, I think it's really good. So it's especially in limited. I'm not sure about standard playability, um, but I think in limited, this is just such a beating because it's X red green, and I misread this the first time. I read this as choose one, but it says no. It says choose one or more. It deals X damage to target creature with flying. X damage to target creature without flying, and or X damage to target player. So it's at least a one mana more expensive um, blaze to their face, and probably a removal spell. I'm not sure if it'll ever be a double removal spell. I, I assume sometimes it will. And uh, this seems like a really balmy rare in limited. Um, standard, I'm, I'm again a little bit on the sketch side, just. Uh, but Naya really likes this, I think. Just a big, big fireball effect. Um, and now, the the big one, and what's going to make this video a little bit on the long side. Gideon. Champion of Justice. Two mana, white, white. So it's four mana, Planeswalker. Four loyalty starts out. His plus one is put a loyalty counter on Gideon, Champion of Justice, for each creature target opponent controls. Then zero... Until end of turn, Gideon Champion of Justice becomes an indestructible keyword there, so it doesn't die to um, murder or you know any other two mana removal spell, um, except for Celestia Charm. Um, so it becomes an indestructible human soldier creature with power and toughness each equal to the number of loyalty counters on him. He's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to him this turn. So his, his ultimate minus fifteen exile all other permanents. So if you if you ult him, you win. But I mean that's that's typically the case when you have a when you have a planeswalker ultimate. Sometimes I mean I'm not saying all of them are, but okay. Well well let's start here. Um, what a lot of people are gonna disagree with me here. I think is I do not like Gideon. I don't think he's that good. Um, because and. Listen to my reasoning here. Please feel free to have civilized conversation in the chat, and I I like responding to you guys. But um, so in the control matchup, he's okay. I'm saying he's okay because his plus one will probably not do too much. Maybe they have lingering souls tokens or something cheap like that. You'd mostly be using him as a zero ability to get around sorcery speed removal and as a finisher in that sense. And for that, he seems okay. Um, I think in the aggro matchup, he is absolutely horrible. Um, because, much like with Vraska, um, yes, he'd gain a bunch of loyalty. But if they're playing like the mono-red deck that exists now, um, or even the green-white, uh, the green -white more aggressive humans deck, I mean, they just do the same thing that they do with Vraska on the field. They just attack you um, instead of Gideon. So... I'm not, I'm not sure. Like, original Gideon was so much better against aggro because he had 8 loyalty, so they had to do 8, eight damage to him. Um, and he protected you from that much damage. Here, you have Gideon, you can start charging up. He's not going to hit his ultimate after one turn, probably. If he gains 11, then you're probably in trouble. Um, and then even if you, you know, ultimate him, then... There's nothing in play if he's exactly 15, but still, um, ah, my gut tells me that he's not a good planeswalker. He's four mana, which is pretty solid. I mean, four mana is where you want to get some of the, the saucier ones, but, um, I'm not sure. I love the art, though. I will say that. The art's pretty, I like it. Um, looks considerably angrier than he did last time. But, uh, this is, this is pretty sketch. Um, I'm, 
I'm pretty hesitant about this, so... I mean, his plus one is good against against token strategies, sure, but... If, if you don't have many blockers, then, you know, you gain plus... You get one counter per creature, and if the creatures are bigger than one once, then they could just attack Gideon and drop him lower. But then he might be doing what you want, and then guarding you like original Gideon was. Oh, I have no idea. I, my gut tells me he's not good. Um, which is unfortunate. Because, well... He's a planeswalker, and uh, we've seen the other one, so we'll find out. But um, yes, feel free to leave constructive comments down below. Uh, we'll have a fun conversation, and um, I'm not going to try and make you guys agree with me, but I'm trying to get you guys to see why I think he's not good. Thank you guys for watching.